that this show is brought to you by Safety FM. The following program is rated MALSV. It contains strong language, sexual situations, and violence. It is intended only for mature audiences. Finally, show with the balls and call it like it is. Rated R Safety Show on Safety FM. Countdown to audio torture. The Rated R Safety Show starts in 3, 2, 1. Ah, let the eardrum pain begin. Forget the corporate bullshit. This is the Rated R Safety Show with your host, Dr. Uh, it doesn't matter who the host is. Well, 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 good morning, good morning, good morning. It is two minutes past the top of the hour. Am I running behind? Is that what's going on? Anyways, we are broadcasting live from the Safety FM studios in Orlando. Florida. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Today's Tuesday, June the 29th of 2021, day 180th of the year, and only 185 days left to go. Hopefully everything is good and grand inside of your neck of the woods. Oh, I shouldn't sit on my leg. Probably a terrible idea. We're going to talk to the posture police in regards to that. Uh, That's for sure. Uh, So anyways, we're broadcasting live from the Safety FM studios in Orlando, Florida. Um, And coming to you live across the multiverse that is known of Safety FM. And then, of course, we're hanging out with our friends, our partners, our colleagues at our sister station. You know, the, the police that's over there, over there. You're in the big mix. I kind of feel like you lied there. You kind of lied that we're here in the big mix because we're not in the big mix. We're kind of on the radio big side. Radio big. Okay. I guess that clears it up just a little bit. So there you go. A lot of stuff going on, of course, our first thing in the morning because that's what we do. We talk about the things that are going on. I do awfully look blue today. No, meaning that I look blue like my tent looked blue. I guess I did not go out to the Florida sun or maybe it's because of the red in the background. Uh, that could be a possibility, too. Um, so, anyways, a lot of stuff going on. So, let's start talking about what we're starting to see inside of the world of the trends. Or maybe I should tell you what the show consists of if you're kind of new and hanging out here. Uh, the way the world goes with us here is that we bring in some professional broadcasters that we hope half the time they know exactly what they're talking about. And then we come in, hang out, do the things that we do. Uh, We talk about the news, and then I kind of give you my lingo of what the hell I'm seeing from my point of view. Not saying that it's going to be the greatest point of view, but hey, it is a point of view. Uh, So we can kind of go from there. Uh, So let's start talking right away about some other stuff, and let's start talking about what is trending. Um, So we're going to talk about the music trends and the top five songs in iTunes and Spotify that seems to be the most popular, uh, you know providing services so let's go number five from itunes was bruno mars anderson bruno mars and anderson leave the door open at number four clear (laughs) credence clearwater revival have you ever seen the rain how is that song still hitting it uh at number three nelly in florida georgia line a little bit and at number two walker hayes fancy like and then at number one ed sheeran with bad habits and then according to Spotify on the other side of the house here, here we go. Little Nas X, Call Me By Your Name. At number four, Bad Bunny, Yonagonui. There you go. And then at number three, Manskin, Begging. At number two, Alejandro, Todo De Ti. And at the number one spot, according to Spotify, well, this is according to Spotify, of course, Olivia Rodrigo with good for you so there you go that's the f- top five each side depends on which music service you like i mean i guess that's something to talk about so there you go a lot of things um so i don't know do we bring in pro broadcasters right or broadcasters or podcasters or whatever the hell you want to call them um so we can bring those in right now but by the way before i forget if you have not downloaded our little lovely app let me tell you about it safety fm Yeah, it's a Safety FM app. It's the radio streaming app. You can download that, have access to it 24-7. That's the first thing. And then if you download it, well, you kind of get to hear what's going on on the radio station, like this lovely thing that's going on right now. And then the other side of the house that we do, we also have a podcast network with over 18 shows. Yeah, or is it 19 shows? I can never keep up. We did have 20. Now we're back down to 19. Yeah, 
It kind of is the way that it goes inside of the industry. Uh, so we're down back to 19. But you can listen, take a listen to the different podcasts that comes out. Now, I do put out a podcast, yeah, believe it or not, um, on Tuesdays and Fridays with a show with my own name on it. Um, and today I got to to uh, interview Bry Sargent, the safety geek. It was, I really enjoyed the interview. So if you do get a chance, take a listen to it. Um, we did release it this morning at 3 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, just in case you care to know that. Uh, so anyways, I guess let's get you into our feature story of the news people, because they're always important to talk to. So we'll bring them in. They can talk to you, let you know exactly what's going on, because I never know what the hell is going on. Um, so they can talk, do their things, and then we'll kind of go from there. I'm so lost this morning. Seven minutes past the top of the hour. Where do I go? Here is the news on the Rising Bar Safety Show. Feature story, News in London, I'm Oli Barrett. The capital of Ethiopia's northern Tigray region has been retaken by rebel forces. The government's now declared a humanitarian ceasefire in the region. More than two million people have been displaced by the conflict, which saw government troops taking control of Mekele in November. India's recorded under 40,000 new daily COVID-19 infections for the first time in more than three months, according to figures from the country's health ministry. Rebecca Bundan reports from Mumbai. 37,566 new COVID-19 cases in the past 24 hours, compared to peaks of over 400,000 fresh infections a day at one point in May, as the country battled a massive second wave. India has recorded more than 30 million infections since the pandemic began, and a death toll that is approaching 400,000, according to official numbers, although many experts believe that the figures in reality may be far higher. This comes as there are concerns about the Delta Plus variant of the virus in India, which has been found in several states. Rebecca Bundan, Mumbai. The UK government's under growing pressure to adapt its self-isolation policy for schools because of hundreds of thousands of lost learning days. At present, hundreds of pupils in a year group bubble can be forced to self-isolate if just one child tests positive for COVID-19. In England, figures show 172,000 children were self-isolating earlier this month and therefore not attending school in person. Schools Minister Nick Gibbs says the government is looking at different systems. Well, of course, it is important that uh, we identify children who have COVID and and then identify their contacts and ask them to self-isolate. This is all part of measures across society to minimise the the risk of transmission. We're conducting a trial in a number of uh, secondary schools to see whether... Uh, testing every day, daily contact testing, as an alternative to self-isolation, to to see whether that is an effective alternative. We will look at the data to see if, if that can be an alternative. Australia's lodged a formal complaint at the World Trade Organization against China for its duties on wine imports. Samuel Wong reports. The complaint, also called the Request for Consultations, gives Australia and China 60 days to come to an agreement before a WTO panel is set up. It is the second dispute filed by Canberra against Beijing at the WTO amid escalating tensions. Between December 2020 to March this year, Chinese tariffs have caused Australian wine exports to China to drop by more than 90% to 12 million Australian dollars, down from 325 million Australian dollars a year earlier. Australia's relations with China, which is its largest trading partner, have continually soured since 2020, when Australia called for an investigation into the origins of COVID-19. From bureaus worldwide, this is FSN. With FSN Spotlight, I'm Simon Marks, taking a closer look today at the outcome of regional elections in France over the weekend. The voters dealt a blow to Marine Le Pen, rejecting her attempts to portray her far-right party as being distinct from the racist national front that she used to head, which Marine Le Pen in turn hoped would catapult her back into the race for the French presidency. It was not to be. Reporter Peter Allen is in Paris. The um, public... uh didn't vote for them in the numbers that were expected. You mentioned Provence, which they thought they were going to win. What uh, also happened there was a lot of the left-wing parties pulled out of the contest to allow the um, uh, right of centre party, uh, the Republicans, who are the sort of current example of the Gaullist Conservatives, to win effectively. And they won uh, very easily 56% uh, of the vote. And Marine Le Pen ends up uh, with no regions at all. A lot of people think it is 
uh, there's lots of uh, huge votes behind uh, the, the whole idea of the Rassemblement National. But actually, if you look at it, their electoral success is extremely limited. The weekend was not much of a triumph, though, for French democracy. A record number of voters decided not to participate, despite a direct appeal from Prime Minister Jean Castex. The next presidential election in France takes place next April. With FSN Spotlight, I'm Simon Marks. To recap the top stories, the capital of Ethiopia's northern Tigray region has been retaken by rebel forces. India's recorded under 40,000 new daily COVID infections for the first time in more than three months. The UK government's under pressure to adapt its self-isolation policy for schools because of hundreds of thousands of lost learning days. And Australia's lodged a formal complaint at the WTO against China for duties on wine imports. That's the latest feature story news. Ollie Barrett reporting. Listen to our host of the Rated R Safety Show. Self-implode on our airwaves only on Safety FM. Welcome to Calvin's Barbershop. You all got to see this. I don't even want to know what you're looking at on that phone. Well, you should. I was learning about the dangers of high blood pressure and that we need to get ours checked regularly. High blood pressure can increase the risk of heart attack or stroke, but this text program can help keep it at a healthy range. Just text Barbershop to 97779 to sign up. I'll get right on it as soon as I'm done with this baby panda video. (laughs) Text Barbershop to 97779. A message from the American Heart Association and the Ad Council. It's important to plan ahead for emergencies, like Like the storm. storm. When When it kicked in, in, we had a plan. We We were were able to get in touch with each other in no no time. The whole whole experience was was the most frightening 10 hours of my life. If If there's there's one piece of advice advice I'd offer other moms moms out there, there, it's to stay calm and keep to the plan. Some parents plan ahead. Some don't. Make sure you know where to find your family in an emergency. Start your plan at ready.gov. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. You know how sometimes you're out and about and sometimes you have to access a report, maybe your bank account, maybe something that's important to you, but you don't want other people to be able to access it? I know you're probably sitting there for a moment going, well, why don't you just go into incognito mode and use that instead? Well, let me tell you something real quick. Incognito mode does not hide your activity. It doesn't matter what mode you use or how many times you clear your browser's history. Your internet service provider can still see every single website you visited and that's why even when i'm at home i never go online without using express vpn it doesn't matter who your internet provider is it can be verizon comcast or even at&t the isp in the u.s can legally sell your information to ad companies express vpn is an app that reroutes your internet connection through their secure servers so your isp can't see the sites that you visit express vpn also keeps all of your information secure by encrypting 100% of your data with the most powerful encryption available. Most of the times, I don't even realize I have ExpressVPN on. It runs seamlessly in the background and is so easy to use. All you have to do is tap one button and you're protected. ExpressVPN is available on all of your devices, phones, computers, even your smart TV. So there's no excuse for you not to be using it. Protect your online activity today with the VPN rated number one by CNET CNET. and Wired. Wired. Visit my exclusive link at expressvpn.com slash safety. And you can get an extra three months free on a one-year package. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S VPN.com slash safety. ExpressVPN.com slash safety to learn more. Hello, Kubo. What have you got planned for today? Come on, this way. Adventure can be found anywhere, but the best place to start is in the forest. It's the most powerful magic there is. Head outside to discover incredible animals. Wow. And beautiful plants that come together to create an unforgettable adventure. (laughs) So grab your loved ones and explore a world of possibilities. Visit discovertheforest.org to find the closest forest or park to you. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the U.S. Forest Service. My teacher said that we should have a plan in case of an emergency. Do we have one? First thing I'm going to do is grab a flashlight with dead batteries. I'm going to start randomly throwing clothes in the bag. You two will be hiding in the closet and Dad won't be able to find you. And that's when we both start crying. Uncontrollably. Can you pass the cutlets? 
winging it is not an emergency plan. Make sure your kids know what to do during an emergency, who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Search ReadyKids at NYC.gov or call 311. Brought to you by the New York City Office of Emergency Management and the Ad Council. This show is almost as enjoyable as hearing the sound of the toilet flush. Rated R Safety Show on Safety FM. So there you go. 16 minutes past the top of the hour as you and I are hanging out doing the things that we do. You know, you know, th- whatever that is, you know, the stuff that we do. And by the way, I why are you lost? I don't know. I didn't know what the hell I was doing this morning. Feels that way. Uh, anyway, so let's get into it. Let's start talking about what's going on inside of the world. Of the news, Baltimore was hit with two earthquakes over the weekend. Don't know if you heard about this, but Friday's quake registered at a 2.6 magnitude on the Richter scale, while Saturday's early morning tremor hit about a 1.7 magnitude. According to the U.S. Geological Survey, both of the quakes were uh, were large enough to be felt by residents. The last time that the state reported an earthquake was back in 2011 when it was a 5.8 magnitude quake that hit. So there you go. Some interesting stuff going on on that neck of the woods. Let's continue talking about some other stuff. Facebook closed over $1 trillion market capitalization near the end of trading on Monday. It became the fifth American company to reach the milestone after Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, and Alphabet. Stock surged after the Federal Trade Commission antitrust complaint against Facebook was dismissed in court. So there you go. Did you think that that was going to happen? I don't know if that's what a lot of people thought. I didn't think that that was going to be the, the thing. Did you think it was going to be dismissed? Because I don't know. I always find it amazing on when people, you know, turn around and go, oh, this is what we're expecting of something to occur. And then it doesn't occur. I guess we'll talk about that here in a little bit. Maybe I'm jumping ahead of the curve uh, before we start getting into some other things inside of there, as always. Anyways, let's continue talking real quick. The number of unemployment benefit recipients is falling in 22 states and that have canceled enhanced and extended payments. Federal pandemic aid to tune of $300 per person per week is said to expire in early September, but some states have chosen to opt out sooner in effort to bolster the workforce. Mississippi Governor Mike Parson said the benefits were helpful during the height of the pandemic, but their continuation has worsened the workforce issues in its state. So what do you think when you hear that? Because, you know, I talked to a, a whole slew of different kinds of peeps, and everybody has their own take on it, Duh. of course. And do you think that it is helpful, or do you think it's a disservice on what's going on with it? I mean, I asked the question because, of course, your opinion matters. So what do you think? Is it one of those things that you look at and go, there is some validity to what people are saying? Or do you look at like it? Um and go no it's not valid it it, there is you know we are doing a disservice to people by taking it away early i don't know i don't know i think it really depends on where you're at i mean this depends on what's going on in your world anyways let's continue talking canada recorded the highest temperature in history when the village of in british columbia reached 115 degrees on sunday the previous national record was 113 that was set back in july the 5th of 1937 in Saskatchewan. and the u.s po- portland oregon reached 112 degrees on sunday breaking its all-time temperature record of 108 degrees which was set the day prior oh that's not good i mean hasn't it been kind of like hot as hell in most places i mean i think it was like cooking in arizona a couple weeks ago i mean but it's always cooking in arizona i think that's kind of one of the most obvious statements to say you are listening to something magical (laughs) you're listening to the rated r safety show okay a boat carrying 20 deceased people was found a mile off of grand turk's island last week according to multiple outlets the small vessel was found by a fisherman who altered local what what that alerted local authorities like altered local authorities how the hell do you do that a uh, police commissioner trevor botting uh, said the initial investigation has ruled out foul play but they are still trying to determine how the deaths occurred no other details were uh, shared under the inv- investigation is ongoing okay so hold on 20 people dead in a boat no foul play that sounds a little questionable if you ask me, but of course, what the hell do I know? 
that's a whole other thing. Uh, so let's start talking. Let's start talking and moving and grooving and doing all that stuff. So let's start talking about stocks. We'll bring in Johnny Smalls for him to tell you what's going on in his stock market world. And then I'll give you my, uh, my version here 20 minutes past the top of the hour. Here's your Market Beat Minute for Tuesday, June 29th, 2021. Equity markets were mostly muted Monday, but managed to scramble their way higher. The S&P 500 began the week with a gain of less than 0.25%, but set a new all-time high. Monday action was led by the tech sector. The Nasdaq Composite gained roughly 1% at the height of the session, with some names making larger moves. The FANG stocks were in the spotlight, with most gaining at least 0.9%. The day's leader was Facebook, which advanced more than 4% on needed good news. Market activity this week will focus heavy on the economic data. This week is the turn of the month, which means we'll get the June reading of the non-farm payroll report. The analysts are expecting job creation to pick up from the previous month, but to remain well below the 1 million mark expected by many Wall Street participants. The biggest risk for the market now may be the pace of job creation. Weak job creation could spell doom for the market. You can get the inside track in your inbox at marketbeatminute.com. Okay, thank you, Johnny Smalls, for that one, just as we have spoken about before. Johnny Smalls can be heard on radiobig.fm. Afternoon drive two to six. Him and him and Heidi have their own show, John and Heidi. Just in case you're interested in hearing more of what he has to say. Um, so let me tell you what we got. Monday finished mix on Wall Street as the Dow lost 150 points, while the Nasdaq added about 140 points, and the S and P gained about nine points. The S and P close. Uh, the S and P 500 closed at a near record at 4,290 points. The third session in a row, finishing in the new. <laughs> Uh, Morgan Stanley advanced more than 3% um, after announcing it will double its quarterly dividend. So there you go. Boom. Okay, so did you hear about this? Because we talk, we've for some reason, we've been following this for some periods of time. And it seems like every time that it comes around, we talk about it. So let's talk about it. Gerber announced the winner of its 11th annual photo search yesterday. Four-month-old Zane Zar- Karen of Winter Park, Florida, has been crowned the 2021 Spokes Baby and Chief Growing Officer for the year. Zane's family will be rewarded $25,000 free Gerber products for up to one year, and the G the CGO wardrobe value at $1,000 provider provided by Gerber Children Wear. So there you go. Now you'll have a new pick for a whole year. So there you go. Winter Park, Florida, right down right down the road. I'm sure that if you come to Florida and you're in the Orlando area, that is definitely a place you're going to want to visit. Winter Park, Florida. We at Safety FM are not responsible for what this idiot behind the microphone is saying. He is trying to be entertaining. Rated R Safety Show. Okay, so two nude sunbathers on the beach along Australia's south coast were fined for breaking COVID lockdown orders. The pair reportedly got star- got startled by a deer and ran into a nearby Royal National Park and got lost and had to call the police to rescue them. The two were hit with a fine disregard of the travel limitations for residents in Sydney, according to the S the NSW uh, commissioner. The region has imposed new lockdowns due to the emergence of the Delta variant um, in the Sydney area. I guess that's kind of an interesting one. So nude sunbathers ran off because they were startled by a deer. So did they run off nude or did they grab some of their clothes before they took off running? That's a whole other question to come about now that I think about it. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that you can think about when you're talking about this. Listen at your own risk. Rated R Safety Show. Okay, hospitalization rates of kids diagnosed with type 2 diabetes more than doubled during the pandemic. Researchers presented research presented by Dr. Daniel Hissa. From Pennington Biomedical Research Center, it looked at the, ad- the admission at Children's Hospital in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. The study compared the rate to kids presenting to the hospital with type 2 d- diabetes from March to December of 2020. Over the same period in 2019, findings revealed an increased hospitalization rate of, point z- of 0. 0.62 in 2020 compared to Point twenty seven in 2019. The findings suggest that the pandemic-related lockdown reduced the opportunities for exercise while promoting more time at home in front of screens, also disturbed sleep patterns, poor diets, and sed- 
derogated behaviors uh, likely affected by the increase in cases. So, yeah, that would probably be spot on would be the first thing. Because let's be realistic. When you're locked in at home for a long period of time, unless you have some kind of home gym or workout equipment, probably not going to be um, focusing on the exercising. And also when you're being told, hey, don't get your ass outside, um, probably not going to go outside. And, you know, some people are going to be like, well, those are just the <laughs> sheep people. The <laughs> and I don't know if that's really the case, but for the very beginning of the pandemic, a lot of people didn't go out. Now, the interesting part about a lot of this stuff is now that we're starting to see different variants come out um, that people are talking about with the Delta variant, it's going to be interesting to see how things change again and if there will be another lockdown. And that's where a lot of questions are going to come about on what people are going to do. So are you masking up again? when you are being asked to in certain areas. So I don't know. I don't know. It's going to get interesting. So let's talk about some other things. Protection provided by the Pfizer and Moderna COVID-19 vaccines may last for years. According to a new study published by the Journal of Nature, researchers found that recipients are immune system cells created by new antibodies to continue protecting against the virus. The findings are similar to what studies published last month found that in nearly a year after people recovered from a mild COVID-19, plasma cells mitigated to the bone marrow where where they continue to secrete antibodies. Over 153 million people in the U.S. are considered fully vaccinated with Pfizer or Moderna. So what do you think about that as you hear this now? I mean, that's going to be the, the the interesting part about the whole thing. It's going to be where this is going to come about as the questions continue. Now, I will tell you, depending on uh, where you're located and all that kind of fun stuff, is what exactly is going to happen next? What exactly are people going to do? Because I will tell you certain regions are allowing people to have their kids vaccinated. So do you think that this is worth the risk at this particular moment? Or do you go and look at it and go, "Uh uh-uh, not going to do that? I mean, there's a lot of stuff to think about for sure as we are bringing this up. And some people agree with it. Some people don't agree with it. And it all kind of varies. That's for sure. So when this comes to mind for you, what do you think about? Do you say, let's do this or not? Some things to think about as we do talk about it. Anyways, let's continue talking a little bit more because that's always going to be important, talking about some different things. And let's get into, well, what do we want to get into? Uh, Maybe it's time to talk about the main. Here is our main story. Oh, I guess that thing, I I double popped. Here is our main story on the Rated R Safety Show. Yeah, you know, when you're you're, you're fast with the fingers there, that could cause an issue, that's for sure. So as you are aware, we were talking this morning, and you might have seen the title. I I have to tell you, sometimes the title is the most difficult thing uh, to come up with. It seems that way at times. I guess that's why I I hate titles. (laughs) So are you at an organization where you discuss near misses? No, not somebody who you're interested in that's a female that might be the missus. That's not what I'm talking about. Um, Near misses. You know, things that could potentially happen. Things that you are reporting onto a report that this coulda, shoulda, woulda, coulda happened. Now, of course, we can have conversations day in, day out, and all that kind of fun stuff about it. Um, But here's the thing. Near misses are always an anomaly. Because there are things that could have potentially happened or that could have went wrong. So as you sit there this morning and we're talking about this, what do you think? Is there a value added on when people are reporting near misses? Now, I will tell you, I was at an organization and everyone inside of the company was required 
not requested, required to report three misses a month. And they would have to report these ongoing scenarios of things that have could have potentially happened that were close and all this kind of fun stuff. Are you in an organization similar to that? Or how is it handled? So the interesting part is that I would receive, we will say, piles of reports because I was supposed to print them, but I never did because I always thought that everything should be digital, but that's just me. Um, So we would receive piles of reports about potential things that could have, should have, would have happened. And I would get anything from chalking a truck to all the way of a rock or a branch in the parking lot that could have potentially caused a trip hazard. Nothing had happened, but it was part of the report. And then, of course, I would have to take all of the stuff that I had stockpiled and send it back onto a report that I needed to present to the C-suite on a monthly basis. And that is not a joke. So I would take this report into the C-suite and would talk about these anomalies that were out there that could have occurred but didn't occur. So I look back and I started seeing some things, of course, online, because that's where I, where I take a look at a lot of stuff. And it was talking about the rough of what was going on, the rough of what was happening, the rough of how you should properly submit a report. And of course, there's always product placement of If you use this, this will help you with our near misses, which it is what it is. I mean, if there's, if there is a demand in the market, somebody will always try to supply that demand. I understand that. But when you hear about this, do you see a value in near misses? As a report, as a reporting measure. Because when you start telling me about rocks and potential branches and things along those lines, I start having some questions, especially because it was required that you had to have at least three near misses per person inside of the organization. Now, keep in mind, the higher up that you were in the organization, the more that would be required, especially if you traveled, because you should see a lot more different anomalies as they were out there. So as you sit here and are hanging with us this morning, what do you think about? Do you take a look at this and you go, there is some value added, or do you go, maybe, instead of going the near-miss area, maybe we sit down with some of the fine people inside of our organizations and start having discussions of what could potentially go wrong based on that they're doing a good chunk of the work day in and day out. Yes, I know as a safety person, you have to do some things. I'm not saying you don't. But you might not see some things that some of your workers will see. Because remember, they're experts at what they do. So do you take a look at this and go, huh? If we start talking about these other things that are going on, Maybe we can build some safeguards opposed to a branch could have caused me to fall, which it could. I mean, don't get me wrong. But when you start seeing all kinds of reports, it sounds like you have more of a lawn service issue and a parking lot cleaning issue than anything else. But when you start hearing this, what comes to mind right away? Because what I get hung up upon is about these things that, Yes, I know we are trying to do it for fulfillment of reporting, but not value added to what's going on inside of the organization. And don't get me wrong. I don't want to say that it's pencil whipping a report, even though that it is. But something that does not bring value that's going to help the overall organization, is it something that should be reported? And then what are you doing with these near misses? Because some people will put it and print it out and put it into a drawer after it's reported. But what have you done to change it? And do they bring validity? Because here's the thing. If I have a near miss this month about a potential rock or a tree branch, 
and then I have one a following month and the following month, what are you doing to fix it? How does it continue to be a near miss? And those are the things that we should talk about, opposed to it just being, okay, near miss reporting's great, and coulda, shoulda, woulda, opposed to doing something about it. Maybe if you use the concept of a learning team and grab people together and say, what could fail next? Maybe that's a different conversation. Slightly coincides with each other, but it's definitely a different conversation as you do move forward. But I have a funny feeling of what the hell do I know? It's the guy behind a microphone. Oops. What did he just say? We at Safety FM don't always agree with the viewpoints of our hosts and guests. Now back to real safety talk on Safety FM. I spend a lot of time in the backyard, and I'm the center of attention at summer barbecues. In 96, I made some of the tastiest s'mores. And in 09, it was me, your backyard fire pit, that accidentally started a wildfire when a summer breeze carried one of my embers into some dry brush. Spark a change, not a wildfire. Visit SmokeyBear.com. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. Only you can prevent wildfires. Hope you enjoyed your meal. And I just want to say, he's lucky to have a brother like you. Lucky. Caring for my brother is far from easy. But he's a part of me, like my arms and legs, so I'll be his. No time for tired. Nothing can disable this love. He needs me, but I'm the lucky one, even though I need help now and then. If you're caring for a loved one, visit aarp.org slash caregiving for care guides and community. Support for your strength. Brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. What if I told you that a tornado was going to happen tomorrow right where you live? that it would touch down at exactly 3.17 p.m. and I told you the exact path it would take. You would, of course, prepare. You would talk with your loved ones and you'd make a plan today. It's true, I can't tell you a tornado will strike tomorrow, but shouldn't you have a plan anyway? Go to ready.gov slash communicate and make your emergency plan today. Don't wait, communicate. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. This is Mario Andretti. You know me as a race car driver, but I'm also a Meals on Wheels volunteer. I've raced against the sport's biggest personalities, but I've never met more vibrant, amazing people than the seniors served by Meals on Wheels. You can make a difference by dropping off a hot meal and saying a quick hello. So, America, let's do lunch. Volunteer your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. This message brought to you by Meals on Wheels America and the Ad Council. So I interrupt this very important show to discuss this important matter with you. And here's what I want to share. You know that for years I have been telling you on this show that I don't sleep too great. Well, over the last few months, I've actually acquired a Helix Sleep mattress. And it has changed the way that I sleep entirely. Listen, I have to tell you, For years, I have struggled day in and day out or night in and night out on how I sleep. But ever since I went to Helix Sleep and took the sleep quiz, it has changed my way of sleeping. All you need to do to be able to encounter this luxury in your home, just go to helixsleep.com slash safety. That's helixsleep.com slash safety. Take their two-minute sleep quiz and they'll match you with a customized mattress that will give you the best sleep of your life. Helix Sleep is offering up to $200 off of all orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash safety. That's helixsleep.com slash safety for up to $200 off and two free pillows.
Okay, 41 minutes past the top of the hour. We are losing touch. This is Flux Vortex with a song titled Lost Touch. The song's readily available on Spotify and iTunes. Thanks for Flux Vortex for allowing us to use this on the Rated R Safety Show. Yeah, it sounded like she wanted it too much based on what she's saying there. Okay, so let's get back into some of this and do the things that we do here. So I am going to uh, to pop up Johnny Smalls one more time here as we are hanging out. And let's see if we can get motivated by the Motivation Minute. The Motivation Minute is courtesy of BetterCreditCards.com. Today's quote has been submitted by Edwin. There's a great anonymous quote that says, For everything you've lost, you've gained something else. That's a cool quote, Edwin. I remember consoling a friend who lost a job. Now, he wasn't 100% happy with the job anyway, but he didn't have anything else lined up. So when he was let go, it was a bit of a shock. I reminded him that this also gave him time to plan his next steps, make some deliberate decisions to do what he really wanted to do. He spent a little time deciding exactly what that was that he really wanted to do. Then he landed his dream job, and he's been there now for several years. And he's a whole lot happier, too. This has been today's Motivation Minute, courtesy of BetterCreditCards.com. I'm John Small. Thanks for listening. Your favorite motivational quotes can be submitted for upcoming programs at MotivationMinute.org. Okay, thank you for that one, Mr. Janice Smalls, and that is fantastic. Anyways, let's continue talking about some different things that are going on inside of this world of ours. Let's talk a little bit about text real quick. There we go. A CCTV company is paying remote workers to yell at armed robbers. Washington-based live eye surveillance offers a surveillance camera system that keeps constant watch over shops, lets remote humans the operator intervene whatever they see something suspicious is going on uh, for $399 per month workers in India will keep an eye on your business uh, video live feed for 24-7 in an example uh, video two robbers one carrying an assault rifle run into whatever it appears to at a 7-Eleven store and force the clerk behind the counter as the clerk opens the cash register the live eye system dings and the voice informs the robbers that the police have been called they run out of the store only on its website. The company claims that several major cooper- uh, corporations as customers, including 7-Eleven, Shell, Dairy Queen, and Holiday Inn. Get, uh, getaway drivers say, hey, man, did you get the cash? The robber says, no, man. He yelled at me. So there you go. That's something that's being offered by live eye surveillance. Okay, in the in the least shocking science discovered news ever, researchers say that they have discovered that slow internet stresses people out. Wow, this is a great report. The report published by the mobile broadband company Erickson claims claims that mobile the mobile content delays on average spike your heart rate by 38% when a video buffers your heart rate rises anywhere between 19 to 34% according to Erickson that's the same level of stress that you feel when you're watching a horror movie with the internet around here. Oh, it's like watching Stephen King movies all day. That's what I would have to say. Uh, so, no, but all seriously, I didn't know your heart. Does your heart rate when you watch a, when you watch a, a horror movie? I mean, I, I have to tell people this because I say this to my daughter all the time, or at least to one of them. Watching a horror movie is almost like watching a comedy. And it's not a joke as I say that. The only difference between the two things is actually the music. You are listening to a radio god. What? This has to be an error. That host is not a radio god. Anyways, this is the Rated R Safety Show on Safety FM. Okay, scientists say researchers claim that they have found a new way of getting kids to follow healthy diets, putting more vegetables on their plate. Larger portions of veggies resulted in kids chomping down 68% more of them on average in a four-week experience involving 67 children ages 3 through 5. The Penn State University research team used broccoli and corn and found out that the increased vegetables served and resulted increase in consumption among children of the amount um, equal to about one-third of a serving or 12% of the daily recommendation intake of young children in the same way uh, with chicken wings. So hold on. Equal to amount of one-third of serving or 12% of the daily recommendation. 
one third of servings. One third to me has always been 33%. Eh, but then again, what do I know? Okay, eating chocolate for breakfast could help uh, could help uh, you lose weight. Yeah. Uh, so researchers at Brigham, uh, uh, excuse me, at Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston gave 100 grams of milk chocolate to 19 menopausal women within one hour of waking up and then uh, then again one hour before they went to sleep for two weeks they found that the chocolate intake made no difference in participants weight and actually added weight loss the study suggested that eating chocolate in the morning could actually help burn fat and reduce glucose levels in the blood the reason may be chemicals in cocoa called flavonoids which are the thoughts that are to increase fat oxidation or oxidation. Eating chocolate at night can also help test subjects uh, regulate sleep patterns, uh, sleeping patterns, and alter metabolism. I bet they had uh, they had really t- uh, had a tough time finding volunteers to say, "Hey, I think I'll do that study." I mean, seriously. So hold on, I need to understand this chocolate. Like, what is this chocolate? Um, what will this chocolate do? I really want to know. And what kind of chocolate was it? I said milk chocolate. And what are we talking quantities here? Are we talking like a five-pound bar? I mean, like in the morning and at night? I'm just asking. So let's talk about this real quick because I think sometimes people don't realize what they could do. Um, I have, like, no idea what they can do with uh, Coca-Cola. And this is not a joke. I'm going to give you some life hacks here just in case you wanted to know. So if you wanted to use Coca-Cola for the following items, take a listen. Kill garden pests. To get rid of the plant munching slugs and snails, pour a small bowl of Coca-Cola and place it near the garden or flower beds. The smell will attract them, and they will drink the, um, you know, the acidly drink, and it will kill them. Yeah, there you go. Another thing that it can do is defrost your windshield. Pour Coke liberally across the windshield and wait for about a minute, and the ice uh, should turn into slush. And it will be easy to remove. Have a Coke on ice. Not a joke. Clean pans. A lot of people don't know this. For any pan that has burnt or uh, burnt on mess, pour a can of Coke and then, you know, simmer it a little bit. And it will actually take care of that. Another thing, it loosen rust bolts. Unscrew a bolt half turned and pour on Coca-Cola and let it sit and then wipe it. You can feed plants with it, particularly um, with azaleas in Guardias. Adding a small amount of Coca-Cola to the soil can deliver nutrients that your plant may be low on. Cooking. It can be used for tenderizing pot roast and mixed with ketchup and barbecue sauce for a wonderful sweet glaze. It's not the type of mix that I envisioned, but when it I bought the case of Coca-Cola, well, it kind of helped out. If you also are wanting to remove gum from your hair, dip the, dip, dip the gum into a small bowl of coke and let it stir uh, then let it sit for a few minutes and then take the cola break it down let it break down the gum and then it will allow you to wipe it right off not speaking from experience on that one because i don't really have hair for it to be caught on and then here's another one this one's going to be kind of interesting clean your toilet with it pour coca-cola all around the bowl and let it sit there is no need to scrub just flush let the toilet should be sparkling clean nothing like a bowl full of coca-cola well, it kind of makes you wonder what exactly goes on once you drink the stuff, huh? Oops, what did he just say? We at Safety FM don't always agree with the viewpoints of our hosts and guests. Now back to real safety talk on Safety FM. Well, this might be a good time for this. Nobody's life's easy, and sometimes life presents us with mountains that seem too high to climb. But that's when I dig in. When push comes to shove, it comes down to your will to win. I'm a trial lawyer, and a trial's a heavyweight championship fight. Figer Law won't back down, we won't give up, and we never give in. Ever. Okay, you can contact Figer Law at 1-800-A-WINNER or go to FigerLaw.com, just in case either one will do the, will do the gig. Just in case, as we are talking. Anyways, let's talk about Did You Know? The first time in 2,000 years in history, tourists will be able to explore the subterranean levels of the Roman Colosseum. These uh, these corridors and archways are where the gladiators and animals would wait before the being sent into combat in the upper arena. The historic opening is part of the decades-long total restoration of the famed site. 
Archaeologists, restorers, engineers, and architects are among the experts who work to bring the landmark as close to its original state as possible. The team use photographic surveys, surface mapping, and the slow, meticulous job of washing away centuries of dirt. The Coliseum was built back in 72, in 72 BCE. Something to think about as we are talking here. You are listening to something magical. <laughs> You're listening to the Rated R Safety Show. Okay, it's currently 51 minutes past the top of the hour. Let me tell you about my friends at the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. Know that you're not alone. Whether you have struggled with suicide yourself or have lost a loved one, know that you're not alone. Hear about personal experiences from people in your local communities whose life have been impacted by suicide and depression. For more information, go to AFSP.org. That's AFSP.org or call 1-800-273-8255. That's 1-800-273-8255 or text the word TALK to 741-741. Yep, that's what we got for you. That's the most important thing you'll hear from me all day. There is no doubt about it. Anyways, let's continue talking about some other things that are going on inside of the world here in the U.S., yeah, in the U.S. Yeah, that's, that's um yeah. Uh, uh, uh. So here's the thing. Have you heard about this? The question that keeps on coming about, is the pandemic over? Depends who you ask. Gallup reports that 57% of Republicans say that it's done, and only 4% of Democrats agree. Overall, the majority say that their lives are now disrupted because of COVID at 54%. A tragic 40% say that their lives will never go back to normal. So some things to Think about um, an attorney for former President Trump says that any charges filed by Manhattan District Attorney against the Trump organization won't amount to much. Uh, there has been plenty of buzz about hush money payments and other nefarious activities. But Trump's lawyers tell Politico that the only thing that the investigation has turned up that is the alleged failure to pay taxes on some company benefits and perks. This is so small that I can't believe that I'm going to have to try a case like this, he said. So that's what's going on in the swamp, and we're out. We did the whole swamp stories. Look, listen to that. Anyways, no, no winner for Friday night's Mega Million drawing. Tonight's drawing will be for $61 million jackpot or a $42.7 million cash payout. No winner for Saturday night's Powerball drawing. Wednesday's drawing will be for $88 million jackpot or a $62.1 million cash payout. So there you go. If you're into playing the game, it might be time to play the game. Anyways, have you been keeping up with the story um, with Allison Max, Mac, excuse me, and uh, her association to the sex cult called Nexium? Yeah, so Allison Max is re- uh, is regretfully uh, is regretful for her association with Nexium, the sex cult. The actress, who is said to be sentenced tomorrow, released a statement apologizing to her victims. I threw myself into the teaching of Keith Raniere. If you haven't looked into this, you probably should quite interesting with everything i had she added referring to the founder of nexium i believed wholeheartedly that his mentorship was lending to me to be a better person more enlightening version of myself i devoted my loyalty my resources and ultimately my life to him this was the biggest mistake and regret of my life mac faces up to 15 years to life in prison depending on what she gets so there you go. A lot of interesting stuff going on um, pop, 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 going on inside of there. Anyways, let's continue talking about some other stuff. By the way, if you want to come and hang out with me here in the next six minutes or so, I'll be hanging out on RadioBig.fm. We'll talk about some of the stuff that's going on inside of the world of music, celebrities, and all that other kind of fun stuff if you're so inclined to do so. Um, if you want to do that. If not, that's perfectly fine too because then you can hang out here on safetyfm.com and take a listen to what was going on inside of the world of safety anyways let's go back to this year and see what happened back on this day are you ready for this 14 years ago today 14 years ago today apple releases the first generation iphone while in development under the watchful eye of steve jobs a project code named project purple was initially supposed to create a new type of tablet but jobs redirected the team to work on a phone and an iPad did eventually come out of the project. Since then, the various models have sold billions of units worldwide. After reporting 2.2 billion unit sales in 2018, Apple has been relatively mum over the about about how many they have actually sold, which I can understand that. Also, back on this date, should we talk about this one? Yeah, on 2020, um, Golden State Killer and former police officer Joseph D'Angelo 
Jr. pleads guilty on 13 counts of first-degree murder and more than 50 rapes, which was committed back in the 1970s and 1980s throughout the state of California. D'Angelo was arrested in 2018 after his DNA from the crime scenes matched the genetic material from a relative registered at the genealogy site. He would later receive 11 counts of life sentences without the possibility of parole, another life sentence, and then an additional eight. That was back in 2020. Let's talk about some birthdays that you can celebrate to do so if you are so inclined. Camila Mendez turns 27 today. Colin Colin Giles turns 39. Lily Rabb turns 39. Nicole Schesinger. Yeah, pussycat dolls front woman. 43. 43? Really? I didn't know she was that young. I mean, I thought she was younger. I don't even know what I'm saying. Ignore that. Shamalana, the God. Radio host, 43. And Gary Busey turned 77. So there you go. There's some birthdays real quick. Anyways, as I get you the hell out of here, and we're going to move forward real quick, let me give you some other things um, real quick. If you need a random joke for today, here's one for you. I wish I was thin as my patients. If you need a phone starter for today, try this. What is the nicest thing a stranger has ever done for you? If you need a conversation for the water cooler, try this. A survey found that the top things that instantly puts us in a better mood. This came in number one. What is it? Finding money in your pockets that you didn't know you had. Yep, that's number one. Just in case, so there you go. Anyways, last but not least, that's it. That's all I got for you. Hopefully, I'll be back tomorrow, God permitting, will permitting, universe permitting, whatever you want to call it. I should be here. Anyways, you've been listening to the Rated R Safety Show exclusively on radiobig.fm and safetyfm.com. If you want to download the app, like I was telling you at the beginning of the show, you're more than welcome to do that. That's safetyfm.com. You can do so. It's available as the Alexa skill, Google Play Store stuff, and, of course, the Apple apps. Yeah, we have it in several different ones there. So there you go. That's all I have for you. So if I can leave you with one thought for today, I would love to leave you with this. Never test the depth of the water with both feet. Probably not a good idea to do so. Anyways, I know who you are. You know who I am. Duh. Love you, mean it, and goodbye. The views and opinions expressed on this podcast are those of the host and its guest and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of the company. Examples of analysis discussed within this podcast are only examples. They should not be utilized in the real world as the only solution available as they are based only on very limited and dated open source information. Assumptions made within this analysis are not reflective of the position of the company. No part of this podcast may be reproduced, stored in a retrieval system, or transmitted in any form or by any means, mechanical, electronic, recording, or otherwise without prior written permission of the creator of the podcast, Jay Allen.